Palantir is up 15% after hours, after reporting um, a, a surprising quarter, and we're going to get into that. But Palantir is, if you go back and you look at the stock, so the stock is down from $35 a share in January of 2021 to right now. The stock, as of the close yesterday, is down 78% from its all-time high. And so a lot of people, myself included at times, have just thrown stocks like Palantir out with, you know, all of these trash stocks that are, you know, just like meme stocks like AMC, you know, GameStop. These, these are, those are stocks I would never want to own because in my opinion, they're on the brink of Bed Bath & Beyond is in the same thing. Like those are on the brink of bankruptcy or in the process of bankruptcy and you know, you'll see them get pushed on uh, across Twitter or on Reddit or whatever. And apparently there's some people that just make millions of dollars off of those things. But the vast majority of people who invest in any stock like that, you're going to lose money because the big traders like the Ryan Cohen's of the world, the people on Reddit who are pushing this stuff, they're in ahead of you and they're out before you, right? And so then they share stuff and everybody gets swept up in it. There's a ton of excitement. There's a short squeeze, whatever. And the sad thing is, is, you know, the majority of people lose a ton of money in investments like that. Um, and, and they never come back, right? Because those businesses are not, are not set up for long-term success. The point is, is that Palantir is, is in a different place as a business, right? Like they're not going out of business. They have a very strong balance sheet. They, they, their rev, revenue is growing. They're getting more profitable. Like that company is not going out of business anytime in the future, um, in the next 10 plus years. Like I'm very confident in saying that the problem was it got to a price to sales multiple of 56 in January of 2021. And now it's trading at a price to sales multiple of eight, a price to sales multiple of 56 when revenue is only growing at, you know, 42% per share and then 31% per share. That's just not sustainable. It would take many, many years for revenue growth to catch up to, to that valuation. But when the price sales multiple is down to eight right now, then if we just go to this forecasting calculator, which has analyst estimates in here, and it's got analyst estimates uh, for revenue per share growth. And remember, this does take into account dilution, right? They are diluting shareholders every single year because they're they're uh, using stock-based compensation and issuing more shares. 16.8%, uh, 17.86, and then 13%. And so what I can do is I can go, hey, what I think they're going to continue to be able to grow revenue per share at 15% through 2029. Remember, this takes into account uh, share dilution. Well, that uh, a 10 price to sales ratio feels pretty normal is probably on the high end, in my opinion, in 2029 for a company like Palantir. Uh, but at a pr this is a good baseline, right? At a price to sales multiple of 10 in 2029, your annual return from now to then would be 19% per year. The S&P 500 averages 8 to 10% per year. So 19% is like more than doubling the average of the S&P 500, right? It's unrealistic to think we're getting like 2020 through 2021 type returns. Again, you just can't bet on that. So on a, on a high end, right, with, with these growth estimates, again, remember this takes into account share dilution. You're looking at 19% annualized per year. I think where it would deserve to trade in a, in a normal environment, you know, with a raise, raise interest rates and 15% revenue per share growth is somewhere between seven and eight. I think that's what it would like deserve from price sales multiple. So you're still looking at an annualized return of 15% um, or, or 13%. And then, you know, bear case scenario, I think is down to a price sales multiple of five, which is, you know, right now it's at eight. So you're down, I don't know, 30, 40% from here. You're still looking at 7.62% annualized. And so just from a high level, like a valuation perspective, Palantir is probably an interesting investment opportunity right now. I don't own shares and I don't plan to at this time. I'm going to continue doing work on it and we'll actually jump into their earnings report right now. But I just wanted to share kind of how stocks are valued, right? And, and it comes down to either a price to earnings multiple 
priced free cash flow multiple. Um, e-commerce businesses a lot of times are like price to gross profit or SaaS style businesses are often traded on a price to sales multiple. You know, the market looks at these different stocks, right? I mean, everybody just got so excited and the best thing we could do from as investors is to not let the market and the excitement of the market impact how we invest in our overall excitement. You could have, you know, you could have just sat and watched Palantir and maybe bought some if you loved it back at a when it first came public. I mean, that's still a high price sales multiple, right? But if you just watched at 920 and had the patience to watch and watch and watch and not jump in, you got a, you got a chance to buy it lower now than it was at when it first came public uh, in October of 2020. That's why patience is so important and something I'm trying to get better at. All right, let's jump into Palantir's earnings report. So Palantir's up 20% after earnings, stock's still down 80% from all-time highs, was way overvalued. I talked about that in this video already. The CEO said a threshold has been crossed and this is the start of our next chapter, my Q4 notes. So here's chart down 80%. That's from Y charts. Y charts is a pretty cool service. Um, their Q4 2022 results, non-GAAP earnings per share of four cents beat by one cent. Revenue of 508, whoops, 508 million um, beat by 3.64 million. Customer count grew 55% year over year and 9% quarter over quarter. Q1 2023 outlook, 505 million versus consensus of 520. This is why I'm questioning how sustainable this little like pop we're getting in the stock is right now. I mean, it was up 20% before and now it's down to up 10% because it was actually kind of a weak quarter from a revenue perspective. And the thing that the market likes right now is the move towards profitability, but there's still some problems here in stock-based compensation. And then in order for this to work, they are going to need to grow revenue. And and I have some questions about their ability to do this. I'm not going to be buying Palantir. I'm just going to share that right now. Just I have just too many questions. And I just shared in a recent email, like I, I just bought Google. I just bought Advanced Auto. Um, to me, those are like no brainers right now. And sure, Palantir might have like more total upside, but you have to think about risk too. You have to think about risk and reward. And I'm just not sold on Palantir yet. I need to see more ability to grow profitably. That's my major question about this business, plus stock based compensation. Um, all right. So, Alex Carp wrote an annual letter. The company has grown revenue from its U.S. commercial sector from zero dollars in 2017 to 335 million in 2022, and its sales force is only now taking shape. They say a substantial U.S. commercial business, in particular, has emerged in essentially two years, with a fledgling sales force that is still in its infancy. The thing about Palantir is, from my understanding, Alex Carp used to be the one, especially early that was doing like every big deal. And that's obviously unsustainable. You can't have your CEO out there being the one that like does every deal. So you've got to grow a sales force. The question is, is can they grow a prof, a strong sales force and can they do it profitably? Cause you can grow a sales force if you're like investing very heavily in marketing investing very heavily in compensation and pay and, you know, giving a lot of stock and cash compensation. But the question is, is can you sustain that? And can you, can you continue to grow revenue as you bring expenses down to get more profitable? And that's the transition that Palantir has to be able to make. They might be able to do it. Maybe, maybe they're about to turn a corner where their sales force gets a lot more productive and, and we just see it take off. That's totally possible. Um, anyways, Palantir kept its commercial offering in a private beta type offering to only a small group of initial partners. They're now focused on expanding to the general public. The need for commercial enterprises, this is from their letter, the need for commercial enterprises to reimagine the way in which they relate to data and to invest in the software platforms that will make their continued survival possible has never been greater. When we were just starting out, many doubted our ability to evolve beyond anything with uh, more than a specialty provider of software to a handful of government customers, let alone generate meaningful revenue from government sector as a whole. They were wrong. 
Others later doubted that we would construct a thriving commercial business. On top of that government work, they were wrong again. Our commercial offering for years made available only to a select group of initial partners and collaborators is now becoming the default choice for an increasingly broad swath of customers that require both immediate and durable results from their investment enterprise software. Got it. But the commercial sector's really not growing that fast. Commercial revenue grew 11% year over year. That's, that's not fast growth at $215 million. Google is growing faster than that at, at, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. So I, I wouldn't be bragging about how fast commercial revenue growth is going. Like that's not impressive to me. And, and that's the challenge with Palantir is they talk it up and like, yes, it's an important technology, but there's other companies that do data stuff. Um, and there's other companies that are growing a lot faster than Palantir at, at scale. So that's a struggle that they've got to get over and they're talking it up, but um, it's, it's really not as impressive as Alex Karp makes it sound. Uh, he is as smartly playing up Palantir's focus on AI and natural language processing. Everyone's getting way too excited about ChatGPT, my opinion. Uh, we've seen AI companies with no real businesses skyrocket. It's very similar to like anything blockchain related back a few years ago. Um, and he's not lying here, but he's definitely playing to the hot trend. And I, I think like stocks are interesting right now. There are scanners out there that look for keywords like AI, natural language processing. And when they the second they see that stuff, they know people are getting excited. So they'll have algorithms that buy shares and then there's all kinds of ways that people can try to pump stocks. And I'm not saying that management is doing this. I'm just saying that there's investors out there that are going to look for this stuff, know that people are going to get excited about it and then get in before other people and out before they're, they're just looking for like 1% on these trades or 2% or 3% or whatever. They quickly trade in quickly trade out like the, the book on, you know, Renaissance, um, the man who solved the market, I think is a name about these algorithmic traders who are just like beating you and trading faster and just getting 1% out of every single trade or whatever it is, even a 10th of a percent, but doing it hundreds or thousands of times a day. That's the type of stuff that goes on with some of these keywords. The transformative potential of software, which we have been building for two decades, is only the earliest stage of revealing itself demand for customers for our platforms has in recent months gained additional momentum, accelerating embrace of artificial intelligence by companies across sectors and industries. We anticipate that this new source of demand will contribute our growth moving forward above and beyond what we would have anticipated even late last year. Widespread adoption of artificial intelligence in civilian applications will come soon. In military context, it's already arrived. And then, yeah, I, I'm, I do a full review and study of stocks like this in the email newsletter. Again, it's linked in the description. Um, or you can follow me on Twitter or here on YouTube. Just make sure if you're watching this, you're subscribed to the channel.